Hello and welcome back to the Go Karts and Good Times YouTube channel. Today I'm finally going to be addressing the problems that are keeping me from putting my new car on the road. And unfortunately this video might be a little bit jumbled up like the last one, but I definitely stay tuned till the end. Because I decided to split this video in half, this is actually the video before the video, but the car is already done. As you can see, it has new brakes and an exhaust. Like I said before, I urge you to stick around to see how I got the exhaust on and a little how-to for the brakes, as well as some of my first little tiny touches. Without further ado, this video travels back in time to when my first parts started arriving. Coming a day sooner than expected, my manifold from eBay with the cat finally showed up for the Impreza. This is the biggest part that's keeping me from getting this car on the road. In any case, for eBay and for the price I paid, this really doesn't look bad. The welds look decent enough and it looks like the right part for the car. For the time being, this is where it will lie. Today we're back again and because making it work right is more important than making it look good, I'm going to start by replacing the catalytic converter. The first step is unplugging these O2 sensors so I can extract them once I get the cat out. These are a little bit stuck on there, but a little persuasion and they should come off no problem. And after getting both clips, one and two. My next order of business is getting the car jacked up so I can remove the header. With a good jacking point located, I can get this thing up in the air. With one side set, I can move to the other. First, I'll get this horrendous and rattly heat shield removed. Then I can drop the manifold. Well, the good news is that the manifold is dropped. There's one pesky nut that's still stuck on the top part of the flange that goes to the rest of the exhaust. By dropping the rest of the exhaust, we can get better access to that nut that I can't get at. extract the O2 sensors, then work on getting this exhaust shield removed, which happens to only have a couple pieces of hardware left. These removed, in good condition, I can start chopping this up. Out with the old, and in with the new. And after acquiring new studs, I can finally get the new manifold installed. Before I go throwing the new manifold in, I'm going to get these plugs taken out and install the old O2 sensors, which hopefully still work. The sensors installed, I'm going to move on to getting those new studs in. Again, it's just a matter of getting these in and getting them snugged up so that I can clean up the surface, put the gasket on, and put the manifold in. After getting the original hardware cleaned up a little bit, I can finally put it all back together. Just like that, the new manifold is installed. And while this may just seem like replacing a broken part to some people, this is my first time turning a wrench on my car. Working backwards, all that's left to do is get the O2 sensors plugged in and hope that the code doesn't come back. For the rest of the exhaust, I was originally planning on leaving this as long as possible, but on eBay, there are some really, really cheap options that I can make work, and it seems like it's just the right thing to do. Hopefully. I can get a little bit of money for the cats to pay for the new exhaust. For now, that's all I can really do. With brake parts hopefully coming soon and ordering my exhaust tonight so that that should come shortly thereafter. Another thing I noticed while under the car and walking around on jack stands is that there are random places where someone worked on it before and didn't put the proper clips or fasteners back, such as the bumpers. The rest of the body is pretty much solid but it's just these little things that stand out to me and I'd like to fix in the long run. At the end of the day, well, I do want this car to be driving at its best, it is kind of a beater. It was really cheap to begin with 
and it's a starter card and a card that's going to be during the hard winters of the Northeast. Fortunately, I noticed a torn CV boot on one of the axles, which will need to be resolved eventually, and a little bit of oil buildup on one of the banks of cylinders on the engine. And besides that, everything checks out as I thought it would. Even though it's the smallest package so far, it's very exciting and it finally came in the mail. And by it, I mean my Broadway mirror. While not necessary by any means, it is a really cool touch and it'll do very nicely over top of this delaminated original one. The packaging alone is super cool and out it comes. Taken out of the packaging, it's just as easy as clipping it on. There are spring-loaded tabs on the back, which hug the top and bottom of the original mirror. Again, even though it's not the biggest thing in the world, this is a super cool touch for the interior of the car. Just about a day later, and another exciting package came in the mail. Finally, my exhaust has arrived. And even though I ordered it much later than the brakes, it came surprisingly fast. And by surprisingly fast, I mean nearly a week early from the eBay shipping estimate. Don't get me wrong, an eBay stainless turbo back with a fart can muffler is not my first choice by any means, but it is the cheapest, and being stainless of any grade, it should hold up a lot better than aluminized mild steel or uncoated metal that would be about the same price. The real question in my mind is what do you actually get for $200? Looking over everything quickly, nothing appears to be damaged, so that's a good sign. Another point I want to make, I know that this is a much larger diameter than stock, and that means a lot less back pressure, which is great if you're talking about using it for a turbo application like on the WRX or the STI. Here, less back pressure will mean slightly less low end and slightly more high end a compromise I'm willing to deal with. While this is considerably larger than I expected, this exhaust will work just fine if I can get it adapted up to the manifold I installed. Unfortunately, I won't be able to start working on it until the weekend, but at least it's arrived, so that when I have the time, I can start getting parts of it installed on the car. Unfortunately, to make the new diameter exhaust work with the factory manifold, I'm going to need an adapter that goes from two inch to three inch. Fortunately, I was able to find a stainless steel one for cheap on Amazon, and I was able to find this flange up in my store of random parts that I get to use to go onto the factory manifold. You can only guess that it's a flange off a collector of some old headers, but it happens to be just the right diameter and fit onto the Subaru manifold. All I really have to do now is wait for my parts to come in the mail before I can start working. It's the next day and another somewhat heavy package arrived. Just as I suspected, my brakes are finally here. With everything unpacked, it looks like it's all here. And I don't have very high expectations for brakes off of eBay that cost less than $100. But as long as the rotors aren't warped and the pads aren't just complete garbage compound, they should be all right. I mean, after all, this has to be better than this. Well, I don't have the time to get working now, I'll start cracking on the exhaust and the brakes this coming weekend. And after I get these parts installed, the only thing keeping me from driving this down the road is doing some paperwork. Now it's finally time to get to work, which starts with getting the car up on jack stands. With the car all jacked up, I'm going to start with something easy and get it out of the way from sitting on the floor by bolting up the muffler and the mid pipe. <laughs> is all I can do on the exhaust because I don't have the coupler that I need to modify the other part and get that bolted up to. The next step now is brakes. Brakes are pretty simple and straightforward, so I'll probably only actually be showing the process for one wheel. I'll probably be adjusting the parking brake as well because it seems a little bit loose when using it in the car. And the fairly obvious first step is to take all the wheels off. Typically when taking off the wheels, I'd probably clean them up and use some rim paint on them to look a little bit better than the chipping and dirty state they're in now. But I do want to get wheels and tires as soon as I have the money for it. So I don't know if it's really worth it because they'll be dirty most of the time anyway and new ones are coming as soon as possible. All the wheels taken off, the next step is loosening up the caliper bolts so I can pull them off and get the rotors off. When you're taking off the caliper, it's a good idea to wiggle it against the rotor so that you compress the piston and it's easier to take the caliper off with the pad. Thank you. 
It's also a good idea to use one of the old pads and some channel locks to compress the piston so that it's a lot easier to get it reinstalled with the new pads and motor. Next is removing the caliper bracket so I can get this rotor off. One of these bolts is giving us a little bit of trouble coming off, so we're going to use the torch to persuade it. One step you'd want to take after removing the caliper bracket is removing these slider pins. These are what the caliper actually bolts to, and these are what slide in and out as the caliper is used. On the driver's side bracket, they came out just fine, but on this passenger one, it's a little bit stuck. This is the primary reason why the brakes hung up and started to smell as you drove the car around. Typically, after cleaning these up, you'd want to replace this boot as well as cleaning up these inner races that the brake pads slide against. These pins and the inner races of those brackets both get the wire wheel treatment so that they can slide smoothly and so that they don't get seized in for next time the brakes need to be done. With everything from here to here to here cleaned up, everything gets to be greased. And typically you'd want to also wire wheel and clean up this hardware as well. I will be getting new boots for these pins. And one of these pins has a little recessed section for a rubber tube that also comes with a kit for the boots. With both of the fronts disassembled, I'm going to hold off on the back until I can run to the parts store to get brake cleaner and this new hardware before I start reassembly. Basically the same process for all four wheels until it comes to the parking brake. So far, nothing looks too bad, and this is where it'll sit until we get back from the parts store. Unfortunately, if I wanted the OEM replacement bolt, I'd have to wait multiple days for it to come into the parts store, and it's very expensive. I did, however, get the boots, so now I can use brake cleaner to clean up these parts and get them greased up for reassembly. Now, this is a little bit to do one-handed, but this tube just slips right over and you slide it down into this recessed area here. With a little bit of lubricant applied, it slips right on into place. Again, hard to do one-handed, but the boot should slip right over and slide into place on its groove. And after some lubricant is applied to the cleaned surfaces here, it should slip right in, and the other end of the boot will slip right over the other groove here. And then the exact same process is done for the other side, minus that special tube. The next step before getting the bracket installed in the car is getting these installed. A little bit of lubricant can go a long way with getting parts installed and keeping them from getting corroded into place. Again, a little bit easier with one hand, but it just shows how easy it is to do. To get these brackets clipped in place, then lubricated before this can be installed. With the bolts clean and the bracket all set, it's finally time to get it installed. It's always a good idea to degrease your rotors before you get them installed. From here, it's basically the exact same process we used to disassemble the brakes, but backwards. Starting with getting the new rotors installed, then getting these brackets bolted up. Next, come actually putting on the new pads and the caliper. Just like that, the new brakes are installed. Just like I said before, that's basically the process for all four wheels, except for the parking brake. Here, we're not actually going to be replacing any parts because they're in good working order, but we will be tightening up the parking brake, and then before putting the rotor on, cleaning it out really, really well with brake cleaner. From there, I'm just going to get to work and update you when I get done or if I encounter any problems. Before I finish the rear brakes, I thought I'd show off the parking brake adjustment process. Using this little dial here, 
You can make the shoes move in and out to make the parking brake looser or tighter. Basically what you want to do is put the rotor on and off, adjusting the style till you get it just right. As far as progress on the exhaust for today goes, Amazon sent me the wrong part. I thought I was going to be able to weld the stainless coupler between my piece and this exhaust here to get it mated up to the manifold. Fortunately, we found these at the parts store and they're not stainless, but they'll work. And after all, I'm going to be cutting up this exhaust anyway, which means I'll be compromising its stainless properties and it's not going to last forever anyway. What this really means is that I need to get this cut up and tacked together and start bolting it up underneath the car to see where and how long these couplers need to be. The time has come for the first step of the exhaust modification. And to be honest, a very nerve wracking step of cutting up the brand new exhaust that just came in the mail. With the first section of pipe cut into bird, it's now time to move on to this section of the downpipe. With the second section of tube cut and cleaned up, now I just have to get under the car and see which direction the pipe needs to go. As far as this piece goes, it's all right if I just weld it straight onto the end of this one. I also took the time to grind down smooth and remove that little bracket that would have been used on a WRX, but I don't need because I'm chopping this pipe up anyway. All that's left to do is get this thing tacked up. So the pipe's not perfectly straight, but it really doesn't need to be until we get close to the manifold. This looks pretty good for now. I'm going to get it bolted up underneath temporarily to see where I need to go from here and how far I actually am from the manifold. I'm not sure how well you can see things because I'm pretty jammed under here, but there's the manifold and there's the pipe I just welded. The gap between them is just over a foot, maybe a foot and a half. So now it's just time to weld on the step down coupler. With an extra length of pipe acquired, I can now make the exhaust long enough to reach the manifold. It's too long in its current state, so I'm going to cut it in half, and then I can put on both of the reducers. Next, this section of tube and both of the reducers need to be cleaned up and their edges ground bare so that they can be welded together. You'll notice that I cut this piece at an angle. That's because from where the exhaust is currently pointed, the flange from the manifold is up slightly and at an angle to the right. This means that I'll have to angle the exhaust in that direction so that both flanges can mount up flat and the exhaust isn't at some weird crooked angle trying to shoot it straight at it. As far as this flange goes, it's not exactly meant to be bolted directly up and welded onto a pipe like I'm using it. So I'll have to use the angle grinder or something to plane it down and get it prepared so that I can actually weld it onto the pipe. Also, the holes are very, very ever so slightly off, so I'll have to drill them out a tiny bit so it'll slide on nicely. I'd just like to add that if you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, you've seen enough of me grinding and drilling holes, prepping metal and stuff like that. So I'm mainly leaving it out of this video because it's just a time waster. And with this piece prepped, I can finally start bolting stuff up under the car so that I can tack it together. Another side note, hopefully I can sell these catalytic converters and this up pipe that I obviously won't be needing because it's not a WRX. exhaust at least tacked up, I can pull it down and start welding it up. Now it's basically just a bunch of welding. And unfortunately, there's a bit of an air gap between the flange and the pipe, so I made a shim to get a little bit closer. This is really ugly and I don't like that I have to do this, but as long as it seals, it's fine. And this is really what I expected. I'm just going to have to make it work because this exhaust was not at all meant for my car. And in any case, it can't be worse than the chopped up factory exhaust that was already in there that had random sketchy stuff like this anyway.
I'm not exactly sure why I chose to weld like this over here, probably because it worked around the flange, but trying to do actual beads comes out so much nicer. And I probably should have done some practice welds before I started going at the pipe, but these really shouldn't leak, so I don't have a problem with how it looks regardless. And unfortunately, it appears that I'm melting the box that I'm using as a stand. If anything, judging my welds based on the most recent one, these don't look too bad. I'm really surprised. And now onto the last weld. <laughs> Probably because I'm welding eBay stainless steel with non-stainless wire and that all the other joints were slightly overlapped and these at some points had a slight air gap. Maybe that's partly why there's bubbles in the welds, but I'm not sure. I'll probably have to grind it down and go back over it again to make sure it doesn't leak. Otherwise, the pipe is basically done. After grinding it down and going over it a second time, I don't think it's going to leak, but it sure is ugly as heck. The only thing left to do now is get it in the car. probably notice from the time lapse that when I tighten the flange from the manifold to the rest of the exhaust, it pulls it down into one side. This means that I'll probably have to make a cut and weld it back at an angle so that there isn't pressure on it. It's at least bolted up though, and I figured before I go through all the trouble to rip it down, I should at least hear it start up once. Unfortunately, it appears the battery is actually dead, so I'll put the trickle charger on and we'll come back tomorrow. Even though it's not perfect, the battery is now charged up enough for a proper start. considered I'm a little bit upset that it doesn't sound as good as I thought it would but it is quieter than the cutoff muffler exhaust so it passes in that respect. As far as getting the exhaust to sit in a better spot I'm probably going to be cutting it and welding it at an angle like I said last night. This is something I don't need to show on camera because again you've seen enough of cutting and welding and tweaking and I'm making this all up as I go and it's a little bit easier not to have to talk about every step because I don't even know what the next step is. Anyway, I guess you'll see when I get the problem resolved. With the exhaust problem improved upon and the brakes finally all finished, it's time to get the wheels back on and lower the car back down. sound clip outside of the garage. While being far from something I need, another trinket for the car showed up in the mail. Getting these screws right here loosened up, one side of the nylon strap should slip out so that it can be installed around something. Again, it's another stupid little accessory, but these things add up to really make the interior of the car. It's been a few days, and this video is finally edited and done. This means that the only things I have to do before I consider the car done are a couple little maintenance items, like an oil change, replacing some blown bulbs, and getting it clean. And since the last clip, the clearance issue with the exhaust is resolved. 
it's finally time to give this thing the love it deserves. With a bucket of supplies, all that's left to do is get to work. Normally I'd do some kind of edit here, but I really just want to get this thing done. So let's do it. And just like that, it's done. And it's probably not as clean as I wanted it to be, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was when I started. And sure, it has its fair share of nicks and dings, but I never expected it to be perfect anyway. Really, now like I said, it's just a couple of maintenance items and getting the interior cleaned up a little bit better. I'm gonna have to throw this in out of order, but that's all right. Before I go, I just wanna say that I also went in with Windex and got all the windows cleaned and went back in with the vacuum to make it finally spotless inside. And the floor mats are drying and they finally also look clean. Even though I didn't really anticipate doing it today, as far as cleaning goes, the car is finally done. That means I'm ending the video here. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, commented, or even subscribed to the channel. For now, this is how the car will sit before I can start doing real mods, like lowering the car or getting wheels. But for now, this is me signing off.